G'day guys, welcome to another video in my stash series. Uh, this is an unboxing of another kit that I have. I'm just going to uh, show you guys. And there's going to be a lot of these videos come out in the next few weeks. I'm going to try and do at least three or four every day. If I can get more out, um, that'd be good. But what we got here is a Trumpeter 135th German Berg Panzer IV. Okay, so kit number on this particular model is double zero three eight nine okay so you can see by the box art it's pretty pretty nice you can pretty much do your painting off this this is pretty much what i'll be doing i'll be using this for the color the weathering and all the dust effects are also on here as well um especially the timber details uh the the blocks spare wheels just everything there that's you know, even like bit of damage, streaking, it's all here. Okay, so it's another thing that I that I'd like to point out that you can use this box art for reference. Um, if you don't have any colour reference books or you don't have access to anything like that where you're from. So but you know nice glossy box and always buy a trumpeter. The internal box is actually quite nice and thick and even the external shell is quite thick so you know it can take a bit of a beating if um if it's in your stash okay so the short edges as per normal with the trumpeter kits is pretty much what's on the top so there's no need to show you that uh, the bottom long side is just a little bit a little bit about the vehicle um, so you know feel free to pause that you can read it it's not much there to read okay um, the date on this kit is 2009 so yeah, it's not that old like I don't consider this kit old um, I consider it's 2017 now so you know it has been out for a little while but it's really not that old guys um, just to show you a couple of uh, PE sheets that are included in the kit so there is a little bit of PE in here but just enough to make the details nice but you know nothing where not too much where you know it's going to put you off um, from doing PE okay so this kit um, this is a second hand kit but whoever bought this paid $60 for this um, I think I'm pretty sure it's Australian dollars um, but yeah I did buy this, buy this online off a second hand Facebook but I did pay 35 bucks for this at um, one of the IPMS swap meets uh, last year okay so the top side of the box um, there's some nice coloured uh, photographs of the completed model or what it can look like uh, if you put the work into it okay and then just some safety instructions on the side not recommended for children's zero to three uh, this product's not a toy and it's probably recommended for 14 plus um, don't really agree with that 14 plus you know I, you probably can have guys model um, a little bit younger than that but obviously with adult supervision is probably what they're talking about there so let's crack the box open so that's it See, nice thick cardboard box as always by a trumpeter okay so in the bag it's there's not too much but there is a little bit in here so I mean for 35 bucks what I pay this is a complete bargain so if I show you here trumpeter generally puts a little internal box of some sort to protect um, some of the delicate parts okay so I'm just gonna and what we've got in here because this is, this is a Panzer IV it is actually quite a small chassis so you don't expect a large vehicle in here but it's got a lot of detail nonetheless so um, the oh, there's also a bit of chain in here so I'd say this is for for the crane okay so a bit of workable chain for the crane so but I'll get rid of this box. Okay, so. Okay, so what we got here is some very nice details on the side wall of the lower hole, and especially on the bottom. Okay, so if you guys can see that, if I bring you in, you can just see there's just lots of beautiful rivet detail on the bottom. Um, and I really like seeing this in kits where they don't forget about the bottom, even though most of the time, you know, the, the vehicle is going to be on the sitting flat on your shelf or even on a diorama base or whatever. 
whatever you're going to do with it but you know it's it's still um, nice that they do put these details in here because you know it's there and the model does look finished and complete when these details are there so um, it's a big thumbs up from me how they do that and um, the more trumpeter kits I'm looking at these days the more and more I'm really liking them so that is the lower hole don't need to show you too much there the top plate of the hole once again there are some nice details on the side and on the top um, not so much detail um, I guess you know once you put all the tools and all the other glue and all the other parts you know then all the details will start to pop out I guess but you know just as one piece there there's really not much there to show you except some nice recess details no flash no burring um, ejector pin marks are very minor so and also they're on the inside so you're not going to see them okay so and this is sprue E and sprue uh, K so there's two sprues in one bag all right so as I always say don't open these bags until I'm going to build them so unfortunately this side here you're not really going to see too much but from what I can show you if I can um, there's some really nice hatch details here looks like there's some they look like maybe not too sure what they are but there's some just some very very nice details even to the pickaxe um, there is looks like there is a drive shaft in here okay along here and that looks like looks like the floor so maybe that could be the floor to the inside looks like the driver's seat mounts and everything so there's probably internal details as well um, being a uh, Berg Panzer okay there's generally the top of the vehicle is generally exposed so you can see in um, so that's probably why there's probably more details than you'd normally see on a normal Panzer IV this is really nice too this looks like the um, the, the work, working platform inside the Berg Panzer and there's some really nice timber details here so just be careful when you are laying down paint to keep it thin because otherwise this will disappear because the timber details are quite shallow but the actual recesses between the boards um, aren't too shallow and they're not too deep they're you know they're, they're well balanced um, in my opinion okay so we looks like we've got some kind of their tracks are very very wide but um, we'll have a look at that later on hopefully I remember the instructions to show you and that I picked that up in the instructions what those pieces actually are and that looks like a hatch that goes in here so we'll see how that goes on we've also got a multi-part jack um, for the vehicle as well and it looks like that's some of the crane parts of the crane there <clears throat> That. Other than that, it looks pretty nice, guys. I'm pretty impressed so far. Okay, so comes to sprue B and sprue L. Okay, so it looks like we do have a motor in this as well. So this is another good touch um, that Trump has put inside this kit. I mean, some people say putting a motor in, a, in an armoured vehicle is pointless because, you know, like once you close it all up, you're not going to see it. But if you look on the... On the upper hole here you do have options I dare say to have the engine hatches that open so you know if you are building a diorama where some figures or some maintenance crew working on it or something like that you can show the motor even just a, like an engine change out so you know that's another option which is why like they put motors in here sometimes you, know, you can just shut it up and it's all good or you can shut it up leave the motor out and you can have that as a spare motor for another build for another kit but We've got, as you can see here, the engine hatches here, um, very nicely detailed. Got the fenders for the side, okay, with some, um, looks like, checker plate details. On there, there's the jack block. Looks like that's it there, so that's pretty nice. Hopefully the camera picks it up, so there's the jack block. Right, and we also got some hatches, We've got the track clamps. Uh, but, you know, it's... I, I can't say nothing bad about this kit. There is no flash on this at all, um, which is really, really nice to see. So we're moving on to the next sprues. Uh, we've got sprue M and sprue C. Okay, we've got a beautiful drive sprocket here. Uh, it's part 18. All right, so we've got very nice. 
Find some little spare tracklings here. Uh, what else we got? Looks like we have. And here's some of the tools here. We've got the axe and some lights, some light covers. Yeah, they're all open, open detail. They're not just sort of deep recesses. You actually see through them, which is also nice. Looks like we got some spare wheels or a spare wheel on the M sprue. Got. I think that that looks like a radiator. Um, Maybe, I'm not too sure what that is, but we'll have a look and we'll get to the details if we do get to see that. And I remember to point that out near the top of the engine. So we've got more engine details here as well, so that's pretty cool. So this engine looks like it's going to have, has, is going to be fairly detailed as well, so it's pretty much almost a kit on its own. But, um, yes, very nice. Okay, so we've got all the road wheels, we got the idler wheels. We also have separate hubs, okay, so we've got all the separate hubs here on a sprue. These are probably duplicates, yep, so these are both mirrored sprues. So these are the rear side of the, so this is, looks like the other part. So we've got the ex, um, external side of the drive sprocket on C sprue, and then on A sprue we've got the back side of it, okay, so there is a little... Um, locating locker there you can say so this you can't really go wrong when you put the um, external part of the drive sprocket in there so you know, that way all the teeth line up um, so when you, when you eventually put the tracks on there they do line up and you should won't have any sort of dramas with that um, but looking at all the pieces the rivet details are nice and the shocky mounts look nice uh, what else we got but, you know, and details are only on one side, so the internal sides of the road wheels are pretty plain. And you can see that in these two parts here, or the rest of the road wheels, but the details, you know, they're average, they're okay. I've seen better on some Panzer Falls kits that I have, but, you know, this is, you know, if you don't like the details, as most, most of us do, just cover it with mud, and um, you won't even be able to tell. So, problem fixed. Right, eh? Another A sprue. So we do have four of these, I believe. So doo -doo -doo -doo. one, two. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening here. So you end up with extra dry sprockets, maybe. Yep. So yeah, extra internals. I think they're just to make up for the wheels and things like that. So they give you so many sprues. So there, obviously, you get four of those in one kit. So no need to show you again. Okay, so these are the tracks. Um, some of you probably want to see rubber band tracks. I personally don't. I can't stand them. Even for modern day vehicles where there is no um, track sag, I still want individual tracks. Um, I don't know. I just, for me, I can paint them a lot easier. Paint seems to stay on. If you had experience with painting vinyl tracks, you know how hard it is to keep the paint on them peeling especially um, when you try to maneuver them around the, the track like the road wheels and stuff paint starts peeling off and I've tried everything and I can't seem to get paint to stick on vinyl track so next best thing plastic put the work in and they do come out really well um, turn up the music get a cold drink or a cup of coffee while you're doing it and generally your time flies by just make sure you cut them all out clean them all up in a big pile and that way you just keep gluing and it's a lot quicker that way just cut them all out and then any excess ones that you have left over just go to the dollar store get some little resealable little snap lock tiny little plastic bags throw them in that and then put them back in your um in your parts box and you've got spare track things for another build um so yeah very nice not many not too many parts to clip off only three points per track and yeah so it shouldn't take too long to clean these up at all PE, what do we got? We've got two frets. As always, as I always say in my videos, love seeing bits of cardboard between the PE sheets. Um, just it's more of a guarantee or more of a um, insurance that you're not going to get bent PE sheets in your kits, as I've seen before in some of my kits. Probably in the future, you will when I do start filming all my kits. I'm going to point it out that some of the PE sheets uh, have a slight bend to it, and it's really, really annoying. So you know. Trumpeter do take care when it comes to packaging their kits to make sure that nothing is damaged. Um, but you know, as you can see there, very nice PE. 
very nice fine details um, but yeah if you, if you do have carpet in your hobby room you are be careful because a carpet monster will get these if you're not careful and he will or she will thank you for it okay so that's the PE and that's the box empty and now we get just briefly go to the instructions um, to see what the kit consists of during construction so black and white instruction book and it's not a multi fold out it's a booklet form so which is you know, big plus as well hate the fold out sheets um, but you got all your icons in here you've got your um, safety like pre-read if you're a beginner and even if you're experienced modeler you know it's just good just to have a quick glance through because there might be some that, that might be important in here but I can see for this build and the kit number is there as well um, 389 okay so flicking through first page is the sprue map so it shows everything that you should be getting it's a good way just to go through this and check all your parts before you commence building and another thing I love that trumpeter does is this very nicely detailed um, paint and marking guide it's not just one color of gray it's actually multi shades it shows you your shading your highlighting your, where your washes need to go your pin washes and things like that so and there's a color call out for mr hobby vallejo model master tamir and humbrol okay so and all right so the accurate hobby colors and x is mr color all right so yeah so right so that is that one all right, so step one. Step one's all your road wheels. Um, and basically throwing all the parts, because this is a recovery, recovery vehicle, not a combat vehicle. So you're not going to have any um, barrels, like guns and things like that. So it's, it's a pretty um, technical build when it comes to that. Um... Rear panel assembly, lower hole, and it's nicely, it's clearly marked out, and also tells you, it's, yeah, they're very nice instructions, and I had, um, just by looking at some of the kits that I do have that are trumpeter, looking through the instructions, they're actually going to be quite um, easy to read. Okay, step four, rear panel assembly, we're looking at the exhaust, so we've got a horizontal style exhaust, and we've got all the shot, uh, leaf spring suspension going on here as well. And just, yeah, so make four, that does tell you, just pay attention to that. Um, there is, some of this stuff is like we have a production line build, and also colours are going through here as well, so it tells you here the internal bottom of the belly of the lower hole is field grey. And then we've got the tracks attaching the wheels and gearbox assembly, um, does tell you that H1 is 102 links to make the track the main track itself drive sprocket idler wheels uh, it does say to make two okay two tracks obviously uh, gearbox assembly okay so you now we do have you no know, controls here as well and yeah so as you can see there uh, we've got ge more gearbox assembly Okay, so that big plate I showed you, that is the that is the internal floor of the vehicle, okay? So we're looking So more of the gearbox and more of the tools, okay, so this is where the internal build starts. So by looking at this, this isn't going to be um, a paint or a build and paint kit where you just construct the whole model in one hit and then paint it as you can see you treat this like an internal build um, where there's going to be um, parts where you have to build and then paint and then assemble and then just keep going repeat the process okay as you can see here um, so but you can see here it's very busy on this just on this main plate on this piece of plastic alone so this is don't let a small vehicle fool you because there is quite a bit to do. This is already step 14. We're not even halfway through the book yet. Okay, so hitting the halfway point. Okay, so uh, 
what do we got here? Yeah, this is going to be a really nice, I'm actually looking forward to building this, I've actually been thinking about it, I might start this kit very soon, um, once I get most of the stuff I've got on the shelf knocked out and completed, but yeah, that is a radiator, I think, yeah, that is a radiator, those two big square pieces I showed you, so they are radiators, which is really nice, so I may even leave the upper, like the top section, removable, so I can lift it out, and you can see all this, might even use rare earth magnets or something, glue them down so I can, it's got a bit of um, structural strength to it, no um, one's on the shelf, it just won't fall over, okay, so, but we'll see how we go for that, and then we got the side fenders um, going on, and some bracing as well, included in the kit, jack assembly, we've got some tool clamps, so this is all PE, okay, so I hate building tool clamps, but yeah, it's part of the build and generally has more detail to it. So little bits like this is probably smart to do these probably towards the end of the build because otherwise you'll just knock these off being glued on with super glue. They just gently ping off. So, but all your tools going on here. Also, we've got an internal brace um, for the driving or for the crew compartment. And then, oh, this is a nice touch. So we do have spare ammunition. So this is also an ammunition, spare ammunition carrier, um, as well as a recovery vehicle. So that is my guess. Um, but, so we do have ammunition boxes to assemble. And we start to assemble the main upper um, section of the, of the hull itself. Okay, so we do have the fans. We do have a machine gun, uh, so we do have some form of defense just to spray off the infantry or attacking enemy. Um, we do have PE, it does say to bend. Okay, so there is some stuff to do there on page 15, step 25. Step 26. As you can see there, there's a deck. Um, working platform, spare road wheels. So the options give you to have PE. Um, a casing to go around the wheel to hold it down, there's the jack, there's the antenna, so they do give you an antenna with this kit, and then, yes, yeah, so this whole section here is PE, okay, I'm not good at welding, some of you may even want to solder the parts, but yeah, I'm, that's something I really want to learn how to do is solder the PE, um, there's a log, a bit of timber, so we do have the braces that go around there, and there's like a multi-part log as well, so that's Yep, so that's that. And then assembling the two halves together. Like I said before, this is going to have to find a way to put this down without gluing it, fixing it down with glue. So I might just use some tiny rear magnets, like I said earlier on, and try to play around with it. And yeah, it's, it's going to be tricky. Okay, so crane assembly and the chain. It does give you 0 0.5 times 120 mil, so there is a length that you have to cut it, so you are going to need some kind of measuring device. I'm sure we've all got one somewhere in our tool drawer somewhere. And then we've got some that look like spare spare wheel racks. Um, not too sure, but we'll have a look probably on the next page. It'll probably tell you. And yeah, that's going to be nice. Gonna be pretty cool. Um, Alright, and then it looks like we've got a winch system chain, so we need that's the chain there and the hook. And then pretty much all of it goes together, and they are spare wheel racks in there as well, so that I was correct there. Spare track links on the front, but that is it, that's the build complete. So, pretty busy book, it's going to be a busy build. So, um, if you do see this um, kit online or in your hobby shop and you do pick can find this for a decent price i mean this this could be a really good kit guys i i don't really watch other people's reviews um unless i'm buying a kit myself and i want to see what the kit's like but generally this was i've seen this at a swap meet and this is 35 bucks i could knock this back 35 aussie so it takes it down to about a 20 something american so that's pretty good for the price i paid for this um but yeah Thanks for watching guys, um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the sub button if you like this video, 
or you don't like this video, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down for whatever reason. Um, don't feel bad if you don't like it because it lets me know if you don't want to see videos like this or you want to see more videos like this. Um, feel free to comment down below and if you want to see some more, more of my work, go up to the top of the banner on top of this YouTube channel and click the Facebook link. That will take you to Outback Midi Moles on Facebook and some of the other things that I go to. Um, like modeling events, modeling comps, and model sales, and just general stuff that I like that I post up as well, including photos of some of my builds. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night or a good day, wherever you're watching from in the world. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video. Catch you later, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.